welcome back to lovehorsepower.com. Last time, we installed a fuel pressure regulator using the Love Horsepower installation kit. Today, we're going to be tuning that using Innovative Motorsports LC1 wideband lambda cable. Now, the kit includes a wideband oxygen sensor and a bung that we'll have to have welded into the exhaust before we can screw in that oxygen sensor. But before we take it to an exhaust shop to get that bung welded in place, let's go take a look at the LC1 kit. Okay, this is Innovative Motorsports LC1 wideband kit. It includes a Bosch wideband oxygen sensor and integrated into the cable all the circuitry that we need to adjust that wideband sensor signal into something our laptop can understand and data log that air fuel ratio. So what do you say we get this thing installed and go get tuning? Okay, let's begin the LC1 installation. Here's the complete kit ready to go in. Start off by removing the one Phillips screw behind the driver's seat next to the engine compartment hood release. Then just pull that panel on out and push the carpet out of the way. Now here you can see the grommet leading to the engine compartment. Now we've got a few extra cables in there that you won't have. So just use a screwdriver and push on through that grommet to make a hole for the Lambda cable. Now a good way to get that cable installed into the cabin area is to wrap it up in duct tape and then use the serial cable included with the kit, push it on through the grommet, connect the cables together, and then pull the whole thing back through the grommet into the cabin area. Now here you can see we're using the serial cable connected up with our duct tape mask to pull that whole thing through that grommet into the cabin area. And look at that, you got that cable wired on into the cabin area. And here's a shot of the Lambda cable in the engine compartment. Then we just use the zip tie to hold that in place. Now you need to find a good location to mount the LED and switch included with the kit. We chose the area next to the fog light switch on the MR2 Turbo. Just remove the four Phillips screws and pull that panel on off. Next up, we'll drill a hole for the switch and LED. Then just install that switch. There you go. Now we can just solder these together. Well, all right, we got our LED and switch installed. We're ready to get that oxygen sensor installed into the exhaust. Now here's a shot of the friendly Monarchy Car Care Center guys that welded in that bung. Thanks, guys. Okay, with that bung welded in place, we're ready to install that Bosch wideband oxygen sensor. Just screw it on in, and you're on your way to data logging accurate air fuel ratios. Then we just connected the oxygen sensor with the Lambda cable. Now that we've got the LC1 kit installed, we're finally ready to start tuning and data logging that air fuel ratio. Now our tuning strategy involves zeroing out the AFC and then doing a run at about 15 psi of boost to see what kind of air fuel ratios we get. Now we're expecting them to be rich and if that is the case, we're just going to lower the base fuel pressure on our fuel pressure regulator to bring up that air fuel ratio with a goal of about 11.5. Now hopefully we can reach that by just adjusting that fuel pressure regulator. Then we'll use the AFC to fine tune the individual RPM points that need to be made more rich or more lean to maximize power. Now it's very important to avoid detonation while we're tuning. The way we're going to do that is by listening with our ears of course and by taking a look at an LED we hooked up to a pin on the stock engine control unit. Now this pin sends a signal to the Toyota Variable Induction System and by watching the behavior of that LED we can determine whether or not the stock engine control unit thinks there's detonation or not. Now we're going to use the GTEC meter to data log RPM, horsepower, and torque. Then we're going to take those graphs and match them up with the graphs from the LC1 kit. That way we can determine exactly which RPM point we need to make more rich or more lean. 
Now as you can tell, I'm very excited about getting this thing tuned, and the LC1 kit is pretty cool. Let's go take a look at its display. Here's a shot of our tuning setup. Notice we have the GTEC meter, the laptop that hooks up with our LC1 kit to monitor those air fuel ratios, the AFC, and the electronic boost controller. Here's a close up of the new GTEC meter that we use to monitor horsepower, torque, and RPM. This is the AFC's high throttle map, and at this particular time in our tuning, we are taking out fuel only in the lower RPM ranges. All right, to do our tuning, we got our GTEC meter set up to data log horsepower, torque, and RPM. We got our laptop over here to data log those air fuel ratios from the LC1 kit. Then we make adjustments to the fuel pressure regulator and the AFC, and of course, boost. Now, at this particular run, we got the fuel pressure regulator set to 38 psi as the base fuel pressure. We got the AFC taking out some fuel in the lower RPM ranges, and we got the boost set to 22.6 psi. Let's try it out. Zero our meter. Start our data log. We're ready to go. Drop it in second gear. Full boost. Let's go. Two hundred and eighty six point two horsepower at sixty three hundred RPM at two hundred forty one foot pounds of torque at sixty one hundred RPM. Now we'll take a look at the data log from the LC1 and make adjustments. Okay, we're back from tuning where we did 27 runs in second gear to get this thing tuned. Now we used the GTEC meter to data log horsepower, torque, and RPM, and we used the LC1 kit and laptop to keep track of those air fuel ratios. Now one thing about doing runs in second gear is that full boost isn't realized until the upper RPM ranges because there's not enough load on the engine. So it's a good idea to do some runs in third gear and maybe even fourth gear to check on those lower RPM ranges to make sure you're not running too rich or too lean or worse, having problems with detonation. Now what we came up with is actually increasing the base fuel pressure to 38 psi to support 22.6 psi boost. Now we still found that we are running rich below 5000 RPM, so we used the AFC to take out fuel in those ranges. Now it's important to realize that that will advance the ignition timing, so it's a good idea to either run rich or use something like water injection to avoid detonation. Now what about the results? Well. Before we installed the fuel pressure regulator, we did some runs using the old GTEC meter and came up with 233 rear wheel horsepower at 15 psi of boost. Now, at 22.6 psi of boost, how does 300 rear wheel horsepower sound to you? A difference of 67 horsepower. Now let me tell you, that is horsepower you can feel. So what do you say we take this bad boy out for a ride and see what 300 rear wheel horsepower feels like? Let's go build some big boost. All right, we got our tuning pretty much done. We're still running a little bit rich below 5,000 RPM, but we're not showing any problems with detonation or anything. Let's go try this thing out under some boost. 22.6 PSI boost. <laughs> it really kicks in second gear. But third gear, let me tell you, that is a rush. Let's give it a go. Let's do some more boost. 22.6 psi rocks. Drop down to second gear. Punch it up. <laughs> oh man, it's gone so fast. You gotta go third gear, huh?
not get enough of 22.6 PSI. We better do yet another run. What do you say? Let's boost. <laughs> enjoyed this episode of lovehorsepower.com I know I really like the results 22.6 PSI rocks we had some trouble tuning you know it took a lot of time but once we finally got that air fuel ratio to come up especially in the upper RPM ranges boy it really rips we'll see you next time let's punch it oh, ah!